Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Outrun the Neon Sun. My name is Dan and I am actually talking to you guys right now on how we can get Arcade One Up to actually listen to us, to pay attention. Now, I have a couple ideas on here, about six ideas. Now, I'd love to hear from you if you agree or disagree, but also if you have any specific ideas on how we can get this company to pay attention to the little guys. Now, we have to be very strategic in this when we're trying to get RK1 up to listen to us because one lone voice isn't going to really make a difference. We can say all we want. We can say, oh, we want this cabinet. We want this cabinet. But really, if it's just one person saying something, it's really not going to do too much to RK1 up. They aren't going to pay attention to that. So we kind of have to collectively come together. But what you'll also know in the past that if you actually have a really loud voice on certain things, and now there's some examples that I'm gonna use, you'll notice that those loud voices didn't exactly get what they wanted and actually threw a fit for it. Now this is a kind of a small channel. And I understand, I, when I say this is kind of a little channel, I don't mean that my the people that comment on it, I always respond to the comments, at least I try to. I always try to do my best to interact. I absolutely love that. But this is a small channel. But the subscribers that are on here are amazing. And I love you guys. You guys have been so supportive and encouraging to me in this community. It's actually why I started a Discord channel. And I always want to push my Discord channel because I'm able to interact with everybody and we're all able to interact with each other. We have man cave promotions. We, 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 we encourage each other on the pictures that we send. We try to make each other laugh. And it's just a wonderful community on the Discord channel. So with that, let's get right into these. There's six specific things that I want to talk to you guys about on how Arcade One Up can actually listen to. Us. Now first, let's take a look at what's right in front of us. In this first example, we know that RK1UP, from the spokespeople from RK1UP, the RK1UP date show, uh, we know that they are asking us to get loud. But what does this really mean to get loud? Now, is it as simple as saturating all of the channels with YouTube videos over and over and over again to get our own little things or ways? Or is there something that we can be doing as a community that is a little bit more strategic? So as you may or may not know, if you're watching this YouTube video, you probably already understand that there was a free MK4 movement. In fact, there was one individual who was really loud and actually got so many people involved in this MK4, free MK4 movement. Now this was a debacle that led a lot of people, uh, I would say uh, probably a good majority of the people on YouTube to say, I'm no longer gonna support RK1UP because they didn't get MK4. Why did this happen? Well, I think this happened primarily because they didn't get the support that they wanted. They didn't get the outcome that they were looking for and there's probably really clear, easy reasons on why. You see, once upon a time ago, there was an arcade company that had this great idea to create arcades for at-home use that in the three-quarter scale. Now this company, once upon a time, they needed to push as much content out there as they could to establish themselves in this community. And they stumbled upon a gold mine, so to speak, an absolute gold mine. They had no idea how viral these things would go. And so for the first few years, they needed to push out new titles and new cabinets as much as they could. And they did this. They put out most of the top 20 arcade cabinets from the 80s and the 90s. And it was incredible. And it was just a, a wonderful thing to experience. All these new cabinets. It was so much excitement, so much hype. And now that Arcade One Up has established themselves, there seems to be a collective pause, almost like they're taking their breath. Like, okay, we've kind of come to a place in our business, in their model, which I'll get to in a second, where they don't have to really do tons of content out there that uh, is very specific and very niche. Now this makes perfect sense because Arcade One Up themselves has this now fan base that absolutely loves them for the most part. Now there's some YouTubers that don't. So they can choose to be more selective in what they put out there. You see, from just a few employees when they started, I think they started with four employees, to now at the time of this video they have over 20 employees and they made almost five million dollars last year alone. Now that's very significant as a company. Now they have over 20 employees working for them. So for the at-home arcade community, they are leading the pack, so to speak. Now At Games themselves has over 77 employees and they may have made in the collective history of their organization, they've made over $8.4 million in revenue. And then you have II Arcade, which has about 12 employees and they have made less than $4 million in their total revenue. So Arcade One Up obviously is leading the pack. So because of this history of Arcade One Up, they're kind of taking a breath, as I'm saying, and they're kind of like being very, very selective on what they're doing. So the first thing that we need to note is that Arcade One Up is in control. They aren't gonna put out things that they don't wanna put out. They're gonna put out things that they have planned for. And for us to complain about what they have planned for, it's kind of like my teenage daughter asking to go spend the night at somebody, some stranger's house and we don't know. Now this girl wanted to invite her over for, for uh, to spend the night 
and we don't know the parents, we don't know anything about them. There's some creepy dads out there. So of course we're gonna say no because that's just not in our plan for her. Now we never wanna take the role of some creepy dad, so to speak, let alone with a company that will write us off the louder we get because we don't get our way. We complain and complain and complain. So the first thing that we have to note is that we have to be very specific on what we're asking for. If we're asking for something that just simply isn't possible, they're not gonna do it. Of course not, how could they? They can't just be like, oh, this person wants this cabinet, then let's do it. So we have to make sure what we're asking for is even possible. An example of this is Qbert. Now P-Dubs uh, recently, and I love P-Dubs, it's a great channel. If you guys aren't like, subscribing to that, I'm sure everybody on my subscriber list is. But he's an amazing man and he actually put out the top five arcades that he wanted for 2023 in a video that he posted. And the number one uh, desire for him, and he's been asking for this for a long time, is Qbert. But if you take a look at the actual Qbert cabinet itself and the controls that are diagonal, they're different than everything, you kind of have to stop and ask, is this in their plan? Because gone are the days in which they're going to put out cabinets with one or two games anymore. I think II Arcade and At Games has really kind of done away with that because you can get online games, you can register for those and get them onto your cabinets really simply. So Arcade, Arcade 1UP needs to kind of compete with that in some regards. So they're going to put these cabinets out with one or two games. Now they might do that, I'm, just, I'm not saying that they're not going to do that with Qbert, I really wish they would, but it just doesn't make sense. It seems like they really want to go with this collective group. I mean, look at the Defender Party Cade. I mean, I so wish I took advantage of that. I mean, that is some amazing games like Sinistar and Gorf. Like, that is that is just amazing that, that that's probably why it's worth so much. But you have all these games on these these party cades, on the, the, um, the anniversary cabs. So when they're putting out new cabinets, they probably have to think about, we need to at least put four or five games on there. And Qbert doesn't have that aspect to it. So for now, my thinking, and I could be totally wrong here, is that Arcade 1UP, when we're re requesting uh, cabinets from Arcade 1UP, we have to be very sure that this is easy for them to produce, easy for them to do. Like I said, they're kind of taking their breath. They're going to be doing too many new things. Right now, I, I'm gonna, you guys can probably argue that Time Crisis is a little new or Fast and the Furious is a little new, but the reality is those they've been working on Time Crisis for years, it seems like. They've been working on that for a long time to try to get that specific. They should be working on Marvel vs. Capcom 2, but that's besides the point to get that online. The primary thing in which they're putting out new cabinets is they don't want to create all these new molds to do because it takes a lot of time to perfect. It takes a lot of time to work through. And we are a people that don't want to have a lot of time. We don't want to wait. We're not patient. So Arcade One Up, in my opinion, is going to be doing things that are kind of low hanging fruit, so to speak. Easy for them to do. Easy for them to grasp. They aren't going to do any new molds. In my opinion, low hanging fruit would not include a Robotron cabinet because it has completely different controls and different specifics to it. Smash TV, I would love these cabinets, but it doesn't seem like that's where the direction that they're gonna be doing right now. They're kind of playing it safe. Now, as I mentioned with Time Crisis, they're gonna to have to have a pedal in there and it's not gonna be a very high end pedal. There's probably gonna to need to be upgrades for that if we're really gonna use it a lot. But they've been working on that for a while, so I kind of pushed that off the table and we know that that's coming. We also have Fast and the Furious. Now, if you look at Fast and the Furious, there's nothing new on there. We've already seen what they could do with the Outrun cabinet or the Ridge Racer cabinet. So of course they're gonna do that. They're gonna put that out because it is fairly low hanging fruit. So what would be easy for them to do given the controls that we've already seen, right? What can we request given the controls that we've already seen? Now this, that's an important question to ask ourselves. We can't just get these new cabinets. Like take Afterburner, for example. I think John D even said there's no way they could do Afterburner right now. Now you kind of go, well, why not? because that has so many different molds, it has a completely different controller for it, and it's something that we need to consider. We can't ask for something that is just impossible for them to do. So for example, when they put out Marvel vs. Capcom 2, the controls were no different. We've seen them on the Mortal Kombat cabinets, we've seen them on the Street Fighter 2 cabinets. They aren't different at all. So it was easy for them to accomplish and do. The only thing that wasn't easy for them was to create online, but we'll move on. I'm not gonna harp on that too much because I know a lot of people are looking for that. So what I'm saying is like, we could ask for more cabinets that are fighting cabinets. I think that would be an easy low hanging fruit. Take Tekken for example, if we can get the technology there into these cabinets, Tekken would be a no brainer. I mean, you got Primal Rage, you got things like, um, what is it, uh, Dead or Alive. Or another one would be Virtual Fighter. You see, I mean, well, like I said, when you have Mortal Kombat 2, uh, you have Street Fighter 2, Killer Instinct. You have these cabinets that already have these controls. So asking for these other games doesn't seem to be too much of a stretch, right? It's not creating any more molds that we need to do. 
Uh, it's nothing like that. So these are kind of like what I'm talking about when I say low-hanging fruit. These are things that I think we could actually ask for. We may not want them the most, but we still want new cabinets to be coming out there. And that's one way that we can get Arcade One Up to listen to us. So if we're gonna get loud, we need to make sure that they are willing to do these things and that they can do these things really easily. I think that that's what we need to understand. Now, just like it doesn't coincide in my plans for raising my daughter to let her go spend the night at some random girl's house, it's the same sort of thing with Arcade One Up. If it doesn't coincide with their plan, they're not gonna allow it. It's just not gonna happen. Now this second way for smaller YouTubers, particularly even those who don't even have YouTube channels but are just our, our members or subscribers to channels, and this may not be very popular, but it's to go on the channels like Michael B the Game Genie, to Kongs R Us, to, to P Dubs, to these channels console kits that are super popular, because Arcade One Up does watch these live shows. And as we go on these live shows, it might be a good idea if we are saturating them I mean, which will be great for their shows too. But if we're saturating them with requests that Arcade went up, put out specific cabinets. If we're all combined in wanting a specific cabinet, that's low hanging fruit. Now we, there's gonna be fighting with that, but don't necessarily ask for the cabinet you want the most, ask for the cabinet that is most available, that is easiest for them to do. Because like it or not, they have a louder voice than we do. And we gar I guarantee you Arcade One Up is watching some of these shows. And if they're watching some of these shows, they'll watch what we are requesting for. Now third, third thing that we can do, I think, which would be um, somewhat annoying for John D in specific, but we can go on Twitter and begin sending him messages and saturating his Twitter feed on requests that we have for specific cabinets. Now imagine if they're like, there's just a few major RK1 Up uh, YouTube channels. But there's a ton more of us that can be louder than them if we coincide and we get together and say, you know what, we're gonna go for Virtua Fighters. We're gonna go for another fighting cab. You might be like, oh, I don't want another fighting cab, but if I'd rather have a, another fighting cab than nothing, right? And so if we're actually going on these channels, I think it might be really good for us to have like just a set few that we are requesting. And we can get a huge movement going in that. Now, not a lot of people go on Twitter, right? If you look at all the other social media channels that Michael B or Kongs R Us, they only have a few hundred followers on these things, which is great, that's fine. I'm not discounting that because they're putting all their emphasis on YouTube, which is great. But so if we go on Twitter, our voices are, are louder on Twitter. When we contact John D and say, hey John D, I would really, really, really like a specific cabinet. And, and it may be like, you may think it's annoying, but if there's hundreds of us doing this, it's going to be pretty loud in his ears and it would be pretty comical in my opinion. I mean, I could just see him getting inundated with all of these requests. He's like, where are all these coming from if we all kind of began doing this sort of thing? But again, going off the first example, it's got to be low hanging fruit. It's got to be things that they don't have to remake a cab. They don't have to redo a design because they're kind of set in their ways right now. Like I said, they're taking their breath and it seems like we can't get too many new outlandish cabinets. So if we're doing that with this low hanging fruit, we have a pretty good opportunity to be pretty loud in their ears. Now there's a relatively untapped area that a lot of this community hasn't, and this is the fourth thing that I'm gonna talk about, and that's Discord. Now I'm not, I know it seems like I'm trying to push my Discord channel, but I'm trying to create a community on there where we're all talking. In fact, a lot of people who go on my Discord channel are welcome to come onto the live show, and it's that we do every single Wednesday night. But imagine having this, the loudest Discord channel. They're not gonna be doing TikTok forever. I don't think that's wise at all. But if we ha push them onto Discord, they're gonna pay attention if there's a bunch of us, and spe specifically these big names joining our community, and, and we're talking and we're excited about certain cabinets, that's another great avenue for us to be able to get loud, so to speak, for them to pay attention, for Arcade One Up to say, you know what, there's something here. There's a larger community. Now, we only have about 50 or 60 people that are involved in the community right now. We wanna grow that. We wanna be able to encourage that. And there's no money that you get from Discord. It's all us coming together and collectively being brothers and sisters, because there's not too many sisters, so I'd say brother and sister. Uh, but it's a bunch of us getting together and encouraging each other, being a blessing to each other, being excited about these Arcade One Ups, and being excited for the at-home arcades in general, whether it's at, at games or whether it's IR Arcade. We're all just really excited. So that would be another way to, to be loud, so to speak, because it's relatively untapped. No one really has any Discord channels that I know of that is talking about Arcade One Up or is developing the community even more so outside of YouTube. Now the fifth way, and I know this may seem kind of obvious, 
But the fifth way in which we can kind of show them what, because again, it's the masses that have the loudest voice. And we always talk about politics and there's always a few that have say, hey, this is the way that our culture is going when they're just a collective few, but they tend to be the loudest. And so everybody is kind of like, oh, maybe that is where we're going. But the reality is there's so many people that don't agree with what's happening on the news or what's being pushed down our throats. So we can kind of take that concept and go, look, there's so many more of us rather than these large, massive YouTubers that are getting involved and saying, you know what? We're not gonna buy this specific cabinet. That's the fifth way. Don't purchase the cabinets that you don't want. Don't just do it because it's you're, you're a collector. I, I think it like, we, I know it seems obvious and it's not like people have money to burn in doing that, but look at the TN monitors. Now, a lot of people really don't like these TN monitors and they were so frustrated with it. The masses were, they weren't buying these. You, didn't, you don't see a massive uh, sell off of the, um, the centipede cabinet. You don't see a massive sell off with the uh, Mortal, uh, uh, Mortal Kombat 2 cabinet, the anniversary cab. You don't see a sell off of the, the Joust cab. Um, these cabinets that they put out or the new Pac Mania cab that they're selling now for $2.99 at Best Buy, you don't see a lot of people purchasing these, right? And there's a reason for that. It's because of the TN monitors. Now, personally, I, I don't mind the TN monitors. No one's come up to my office to play any of these arcades and said, oh my gosh, your monitor stinks. No one has said that and no one will say that. These are amazing games. But us as collectors who are trying to be loud in the community, we know that they actually listen to us. So it does actually work. They're only gonna be doing from this moment forward, John D even said that in an interview, we're only gonna have BOE monitors. Why? Because they listen. Because it actually is fruitful for us to discuss things in a proper way, not bashing companies, not saying, oh, this is the poorest thing, these controls suck. But the reality is I love these cabinets, but I'd love to see this even more. This would get me more excited. So the more positive we are towards their company, I believe also that they'll listen to us. Now, the last thing I'll mention, but it's to go into your community channels on YouTube. Now, a lot of you may not have videos, but you can still do community posts, I believe. I'm not sure that it's, it's available, but I'm pretty sure you can have community posts on your YouTube channels for everybody. And if we begin posting the, the content that we actually want, the low hanging fruit, and we all collectively do one or two or three specific cabinets that we're looking for, it's pretty loud. That is, I mean, I don't think people enough take advantage of the community aspect of YouTube enough. If we start posting these all over the place and saturating all of our channels, I mean, that's pretty powerful. I remember scrolling through all those that I was subscribing to and I had a bunch of people, friends who are part of RK's Anonymous on Wednesday nights post, hey, we're gonna have this show. And we had more people watching because everybody was posting on their community channels. I mean, it was pretty powerful. It was pretty awesome to see, and even random people who had never heard of Arcades Anonymous started watching. And I think that's something that we need to take advantage of more in the community aspect of YouTube. So these are just six specific examples on how we can get Arcade One Up to listen to us. Now I know there's way more. If you have ideas on what we can do for them to get to listen to us, please post and comment those. Don't forget to like and subscribe this channel because I really want specific cabinets. I know we all do. We want new stuff. We want to be excited about the new stuff that's coming out. We may not be overly excited about the two new releases that we're expecting here pretty soon. I know they're going to come out with one in March this month. Uh, and I know that they're going to be doing more stuff throughout the rest of the year. But this is just an aspect where I feel like we need to kind of collectively come together as a community. And I'm excited because I feel like we are. We're starting to gel. We're starting to get a bunch of people positive towards this community. So if you like this content, again, don't forget to like and subscribe. Please, as always, keep outrunning that neon sun and have a blessed, awesome day. Take care and God bless. We'll see you guys later.